upcoming waves that are less uh, known and less publicized. Now, obviously, Tesla's mission is to free the Earth of, uh, of fossil fuels and make it uh, sustainable uh, transportation. I'm paraphrasing uh, their mission. And they're moving rapidly towards first electrification, uh, EVs, electric vehicles, uh, then into autonomous uh, driving, uh, which is further along the mission of, uh, uh, you know, reducing carbon and making sustainable transportation on Earth. And beyond even that, into energy, uh, obviously they own Solar City and the power packs, and they're becoming uh, kind of like distributed uh, over time uh, 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 energy uh, uh, companies. Like they're replacing, uh, they're replacing um, uh, power plants um, and the like uh, through distributed energy. So th- each of those is transformational. Uh, but I want to talk even beyond that in terms of um, furthering the mission in terms of. Uh, Tesla's space capabilities. Now, it's no it's no surprise or accident that uh, uh, Elon Musk owns both Tesla and um, SpaceX. And I'm going to talk about some of the synergies going uh, into the future in terms of Tesla's space uh, capabilities. So, basically, and I'll, I'll I'll flesh this out. But one of the major points, uh, and it'll need to be fleshed out, is that the model that's progressing on Earth will start progressing on other planets as well. So, it'll be that um, uh, it'll be that as we get to Mars, a lot of the same uh, capabilities that we're developing on Earth will be developed on will be developed on Mars. So let me go into that a little bit. Thank you. Let me go into that a little bit. So, when you get to Mars. Because Mars is inhospitable because not only of the temperature, but also because of um, the, the lack of uh, atmosphere, uh, the lack of oxygen. Uh, Mars is, I think, 95% or 75%, something like that, uh, carbon dioxide. The lack of nitrogen, so you can't grow crops there. Um, the you know, excess radiation, the low gravity. Uh, when you put all those factors together, uh, Mars is really inhospitable. Now, Elon Musk and others have talked about uh, 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 terraforming Mars, and how do you make Mars uh, how do you make Mars more hospitable? Um, there's two ways to do it uh, to produce energy on Mars. One is nuclear, and uh, that's a possibility. The other is um, electrification. So the whole uh, and so, and I, I don't mean electrification, I mean solar, sorry. So the whole aspects of power, of power generation, power storage. Now, the, the energy storage that you have on Earth is going to be analogous to the energy storage that you need elsewhere, you know, starting on Mars. Because on Mars also you have um, uh, a lot of the energy generation, you know, like through solar or through nuclear is going to have to be stored. So um, Tesla's capabilities that way is going to be, uh, you know, uh, attributable to other uh, planets as well. Now, for example, SpaceX and their and their uh, uh, you know transport to um, uh, beginning with Mars, and also they're going to be transporting anywhere on Earth within an hour. So when you get to Mars, the first thing that you're going to have to do is do um, energy uh, creation and energy um, storage, and then you're going to have to do transport. So as Tesla starts to take over energy transport on Earth, and uh, if you think they're not taking over, they're, even their Model 3 is outperforming all the other electric vehicles combined. I think like Jaguar and some of the other ones are only selling a couple thousand each, and Tesla is selling as many as they can produce. They're selling, uh, I think, uh, already about 18% of the total market, and they keep upping and upping their production schedules, and they keep selling out of everything. Uh, I think they're up to about a half a million vehicles a year now. 
So, and they have like a three or four year lead on autonomous driving. So at some point, uh, and they have all these gigafactories, so they're not gonna probably be able to do all the vehicles on earth uh, to reach that, but they're gonna get you know very large market share because they're way ahead. Uh, and they, they may even license out their technology to the other companies that you know are gonna go bankrupt otherwise. So at that point, they would have almost perhaps uh, uh, full market share at an optimistic uh, viewpoint. So Tesla and space uh, refers to the fact that the capabilities that are developing on Earth are gonna be transplanted to other, society, to other realms. So again, with Mars, you're gonna start with uh, you know, energy uh, creation, and solar is probably gonna be very big on that, where, where Tesla's already a big leader. Um, then you're going to have, I mean, obviously there's other solar ones that's ready, but if, 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 if Elon is transporting all the people to Mars and all the equipment to Mars, it makes sense that he's going to be producing the solar energy on Mars as well. It makes sense that because he's producing the vehicles to get to Mars and the people to get to Mars, that he's going to be producing the, um, he's going to be producing the energy storage on Mars as well. So once you start uh, colonizing Mars, um, then, just like how Earth becomes a way station for the Moon and Mars, Mars becomes like a way station for the asteroid belt, and then the asteroid belts, when they become colonized, become um, uh, you know way stations for Jupiter, and um, you know eventually uh, you know beyond, like Titan and um, uh, you know Alpha Centauri and things like that. So I'm not saying I'm not saying that SpaceX is necessarily in Tesla going to monopolize the economy of the solar system, but they could. Uh, because who else, think about it this way. Elon Musk, his companies are the only ones sending people to Mars. Nobody else on Earth has that capability. Na uh, well, NASA will be also as well. Um, uh, but uh, but um, uh, Tesla has a big head start. But other than NASA, perhaps, you know, a government, perhaps the Chinese government will be able to do it, or perhaps the Russian government or the Indian government. Uh, but, but Tesla, I mean, Jeff Bezos is, is focusing on the moon, and some other companies are focusing on the moon and asteroids. But Elon is basically going to have, for a period of time, uh, Mars all to himself. And he, if he, he, he plans to have a million people on Mars in the next 40 years. So he, he tends to be a little bit aggressive in his timetables, but even if it takes 70 or 80 years, if, if Mars in 50 years' time is primarily all the equipment and uh, on the planet is, 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 is uh, Tesla and SpaceX, then it's going to give them a great launching pod. It's kind of like Amazon when they took on Barnes & Noble and they just became like the, now Amazon does 50% of all uh, domestic e-commerce. Tesla is going to have such an infrastructure built up by being the dominant player on Earth for energy and transportation and then on Mars, the, uh, who's going to catch them? Um, you know, as we start spreading out in the solar system, now, of course, of course, a lot has to do with execution, like Elon Musk could die, or eventually he probably will die, and someone, you know, and then, you know, the next generation might not be able to execute like Elon Musk has been able to execute. So I'm not saying that, that um, you know, SpaceX is going to, and Tesla are going to rule the galaxy, but it's possible. It's possible that they... Uh, you know, as we start to inhabit, you know, the solar system and, and, and uh, beyond, the SpaceX will have the lion's share, just like Google has the lion's share of the internet on Earth, and, and Facebook has the lion's share of the social media, and Amazon has the lion's share of the e-commerce. Um, SpaceX could, ha could, ha could wind up having the li lion's share of the space economy, space, uh, Tesla and SpaceX together.